HDR3. So basically, a supplier will have to then uh, check his form GSTR3, and he'll have to submit his form GSTR3 by 20th of the succeeding month. So this is the flow and the entire process in GST regime which we are talking about. I hope I'm not scaring you guys. So uh, the uh, flow chart is not ended yet. It will go on. So yeah. yeah. Correct. In case you found this to be a little fast, then we can probably revise that, you know. Suppose you are a dealer. Okay. So what would you do? So by 10th, I'll have to submit the details of my outward supplies. Correct. So when I'll upload the details of my outward supplies by 10th, I'll submit my form GSTR1. The recipient will uh, get the details in his form GSTR2A by 11th. So these are step step number one and step number two, correct? So uh, basis on the on the basis of details available in form GSTR 2A, the recipient will either accept, reject, or defer the credit. In case he accepts the credit, then the credit will automatically flow in his GSTR 2, which is step number three. In case if he doesn't accept the credit or he make, makes any changes. Then the details will flow in GSTR 1A, which is step number 4. Only which is not accepting. Correct? Uh, so details will be automatically available in uh, form 1A. Then the supplier again, the, this GSTR 1A will be available with the supplier. Then he has an option whether to accept or reject the modifications which have been made by the recipient. If the supplier accepts the modifications, then this then this entries will get modified in this GSTR one, which he had earlier submitted on tenth. So that is step number six. So on the basis of this GSTR one and GSTR two, which will be finalized by seventeenth, he will be required to either if there is any liability, he will be required to make the payment. If there is no liability in case there is refund or excess of credit, then he is not required to make payment. And the details which are freezed in GSTR 1, which is step number 6, and GSTR 2, which is step number 3, will get automatically populated in GSTR 3. So SSE just has to verify his form GSTR 3 and he has to submit it in the GST portal by 20th. So this is the flow. Yes, is it uh, the timeline are uh, watertight? Yeah, actually, actually it seems, yeah. I mean, I mean, it doesn't even take care of Sundays and Mon Saturdays and Sundays. No, no, one no, part such not. One part of it. Secondly, when we are talking about, uh, let's take a, there could be difficulties for smaller people also, for some big stores or some say more, I mean, some uh, department stores, etc. Okay, where there are so many suppliers, input suppliers and the uh, sales uh, invoices are available, then matching one to one within a day or two, I mean, you can do it for one supplier, but how can it be possible? Sir, personally, uh, when, I, I feel. Mean, I yeah. can, I mean, really no, first, let, let him say something, yeah. then I, I will. Uh, uh, personally, I, I feel this entire process of matching has to be automated. Your uh, your mm -hmm. uh, system has to be designed in such a fashion that it automatically matches the invoices of credit which you have mentioned, which you have entered in your system, vis-a-vis -vis the invoices which are being populated in GSTR 2A. Only the invoices in which there are differences, your system should be able to pop up those. Uh, differences and in those invoices only uh, there should be human intervention. That, that, those itself could be very big numbers. Those, those yeah. numbers can be very good, yeah. very big. I mean, you need to have a dedicated team yeah, for dealing with this. Yeah. Even your system should be that kind of robust system yeah. to do it yeah. and to monitor that system in, in that team. You know, so, not no, not by, so whole GST law is a technological law. So if you don't use the technology or a computer software, then you are out of it because every information which you have, uh, you have to compile, that is all will come from the software only. There is no other way that you can uh, assimilate and compile this huge information. So 10th, the, what, what they are saying, by 10th, naturally your sales register are ready. Why not it would be ready? 10th is fine. I'm, right. I'm saying now, now coming I'm, to I'm your point, next, yes, and this, uh, now coming to your point, sir, in respect of a departmental store, what will happen? 
so there they have given a uh, option that at the end of the day whatever information uh, sales which has taken out you take a sum up and upload the detail because ultimately it's a b2c B2 transaction. transaction it's not a b2b so again let me explain b2b means business to business transaction wherein the purchase uh, invoice, uh, wise, invoice wise, wise, wise detail needs to be given so that other person can get the credit in respect of b2c transaction that means business to consumer transaction the consumer is naturally not concerned with the input tax. The rate. total amount of sale has to be mentioned in B2C transactions. No, no, I am yes. I'm only on B2B. So, okay. B, uh, uh, say person X is a department store and he is getting the credit of his supplier. So, it is B2B. So, there is a question of matching of those supplies. Not uh, the question of matching of the... Uh, let let, me, let yeah. me come in. So, this is as far as the output supply is there. By 10th, you are ready with your sales register. Whole sales register you have to upload then naturally what will happen that by 15th that uh, the person from whom i have purchased the goods departmental store that guy will also uh, key in the data of his sales that would become my purchase so most of the data would become as an auto populated thing that's what he is saying that in step number two the all the details on the 11th day will automatically come into that GSTN network. Whatever I have purchased the goods, that will come into my portal. So basically, an SSC has four days time to uh, do this entire matching process. That includes okay. Saturday and Sunday. Thereafter, every day, it's a daily, you, daily thing. And no, we have talked about it. Anyway, anyway, I mean, uh, there's uh, nothing much we can do about it. What is there in the, is there in the law or uh, rules? So very interesting. There is a proposal that given the output supply, it can be... If the, your software is robust, suppose you are working on SAP, it can be your this GSPR one will be prepared on daily basis. Right? Yeah, it will be uploaded on the system, but you will submit the, those details only on 10th. So now so details will get auto uh, uploaded on the GST network on daily basis. It will not be, it will not yeah, be you you will submit those details only on 10th. So, so other so guy it, will not able to see before 10th. In, in in other words, in other words, now we are demonetizing 500 and 1000. <coughs> Now we'll be demonetizing those who are 10, 10 20, 50, 100. <laughs> so after step number 8, which is submitting form GSTR 3, what will happen is by the end of the month or in the succeeding month, they have not mentioned the timeline, but uh, they, they have just mentioned end of the month or the succeeding month. The matching process will happen. So what will happen is even the GST portal, even they'll match this inward and outward supply details and they'll generate a mismatch report, which is ITC one step number nine. And in this uh, ITC report, they'll give three kinds of details. First is the credits of current period, which are matched. That is the first table. There is no issue in that because the credits are matched. So that is fine. The second step is current pe current periods ITC mismatch. So this is the area of problem. Current periods ITC and SSCI is claimed, but there is some mismatch in the uh, system, GST system. And the third one is previous periods. So say for example, I'm filing written for the month of May 2017. Uh, there was some mismatched uh, credit for the month of April 17, which is also getting carry forward in the subsequent month that is May 2017. Now what will happen is this previous period's ITC which was mismatched it will either get matched in current period return or it will stay as mismatched. In that case what, we, what will happen is the credits which are not getting matched they will automatically get populated in succeeding months GSTR 3 and the uh, uh, that uh, uh, proportionate credit will automatically get reversed in the subsequent months GSTR 3 and if it's getting matched then the uh, recipient will be available to uh, he will be eligible to take the credit of that particular uh, invoice so this is uh, about the ITC mismatch report how many fields they will So uh, basically, uh, they will try to match it with the invoice number, uh, invoice value, tax value. Uh, these are the parameters with which they will try to match. Uh, even uh, yeah, I think even, even, even date would be matched because HSIN would be the main thing. 
What will? Right. What will not be the criteria? HSR. No, sir. What will happen? You know. Nowadays, what happens that suppose I have bought this product, so I will say I have bought this product. I am selling this product instead of this product. So that is the classification issue is a basic more concentrating. So they will see the HSIN code whether the tax which has been levied on this is a right code. How do you justify that? Whether this product falls under five percent or twelve twelve percent? How do you justify that? So HSIN code would be the base from where it would be picked up whether the right tax has been levied or not. Yes, sir. I am disagreeing with you. Okay. The matching is for the purpose of ITC. Matching is for the, there might be genuine differences of opinion on the classification. Hmm. I say this is so I. You say this is for nature. I am giving the yeah yeah I understand. I understand. So long the rate of tax so for whatever suppose you are you are paying as as a furniture and furniture I take higher rate of tax. Hmm. I feel like it is so. What will happen to me? I will see when I will sell. But but why they are why they are thinking not to make the education as a criteria? Because there might be there might be different differences of classification. Classification will play a role when I. Admit my output liability. Both the things so will work, na no, sir. ITC claim is concerned given the current reason there are lot of judgment feelings that no that the, as as a receiver as assessing officer of the receiving of the service mm. of the goods, my assessing officer is not supposed to enter into the classification adopted by my supplier. I'm just true, 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 true. I understand that. But only the thing is, sir, over here. Say, if at uh, the inception stage, if it has not been catched, then ultimately the assessment time he has to catch, then it would be too longer period of time. Otherwise, there is no need to capture the HSIN code in the return itself. In return, if you will say when he comes over there, the HSIN code is there. As a supplier, as a supplier as well as as well as the uh, uh, input, uh, both the where HSIN code is there. So. The fact that uh, it has to be matched, that is what I uh, feel it. Otherwise, there is no need to put it over there. We'll move ahead. Uh, yeah. Matching? Uh -huh. So, what you'll have to do is you'll have to defer the credit for that particular month. See, because even uh, even in this case, since you have not received the invoice, you will not be able to take the credit. Correct. So that since that uh, a supplier has mentioned the details of invoice in his DSTR one in April, so that details will be auto populated in your GSTR two A for April. So what you will have to do is in that there will be option. Either you can avail that credit, you can reject that credit, or you can defer it. Yeah. So there is a provision to defer it. So you will have to defer it, and then in subsequent month, when you are filing the return for May 2016, you can avail that credit. Yes. Each and everything would be matched. Then only credit would be eligible. That is a funda. And otherwise, you won't get the credit. Otherwise, you have to ask your supplier that either you change it, either you change it, or he has to change it. Someone has to change it. Whenever they both will match, at that point of time only credit would be available. Otherwise, it won't be, and credit would be available in the next month. Same month, we have to forget that. Yes, one more question. Uh, when I'm uh, my GSTR two is generated based on what I accept from two A, two A, two A. Ah, my two A. So where is the question of mismatch? Because I'm accepting the credit what the supplier has shown it. See, in in case if if uh, if two SACs, yeah. uh, I think what you can do when you are explaining the form, na, he is explaining the whole form. I think at that point of time, it would be uh, his point would be cleared up. Sure. Otherwise, we will we are just jumping. Sure, sure. Uh, I have listed down some eight points uh, which I feel are important for uh, an SAC to implement this entire uh, you know detailed tagging system. This this detail should be tagged in the system so that uh, it will be easier for him to file the GST returns. So these are some eight points which I could identify. Your system should be able to capture the HSN and SSE codes for all the products and services. The second point is tagging of original invoice at the time of raising revised invoice. So this GST returns, 
they are asking details for original invoice when you are mentioning the details of revised invoice so your system has to be designed in such a fashion that the tagging happens at the time of raising revised invoice only the third one is the details of recipient's state code fourth one is field to capture details of place of supply so all these details are required in the gst return so uh, this this details are important fifth one is tagging of original invoice at the time of raising debit notes and credit notes so if you are raising any debit note or credit note the tagging of original invoice is also required in that case sixth one is tracking of unique identification number where gst is paid in advance <coughs> so if you are paying a gst in advance a unique number will be uh, allotted that number you will have to mention when you are mentioning the details of invoice for that particular transaction that we'll discuss in detail when we'll come to the written form seventh one is field to capture details of eligibility of credit so whether a particular credit is eligible or not that uh, that details should be captured at the time of booking of invoice itself the eighth one is tagging of details of bill of entry on import details on import transactions so the details of bill of entry are also required when you are mentioning the import transactions in gst return now we'll understand gstr1 how does gst uh, I think post supply discount will be an is a issue in uh, GST. So I think that entire transaction has to be relooked. Post supply discount is an issue in itself. No, I think what he is trying to say hmm. is that say in the say quarterly he is hmm. eligible to determine the quantum of discount which is eligible to that uh, buyer or hmm. say mobile uh, uh, wholesaler. Hmm. Now during the whole the three a uh, quarter the ten bills has been issued. And now on the first uh, of July, for example, some co uh, commission has to is is eligible by the wholesaler. Then at that point of time, naturally debit note needs to be issued. So how whether to tag that or not, that is his issue. Hmm. So see he, what will happen over here. Debit note or credit note uh, has to be issued whenever there is a price change in the price level. Uh, mm. Yeah. Now in respect of this amount for the volume discount. For that matter, I don't think debit note or credit note needs to be issued. For that, normal invoice has to be issued, and so that there is no question of tagging would be there, right? Whenever there is a change in the value of tax is there, at that time only debit note or credit note is to be issued. Whenever for the purpose of your kind of case, only the invoice has to be issued. That I am debiting, I am giving you the uh, the no discount, and that's why this is the amount. So that that tagging would not be come into picture. Yeah, recipient. Yeah, that is the service classification, and here also the other person will issue. So the invoice would be issued by the wholesaler and not by the. Uh, yes. It would be commission naturally. No, how can my value would be changed? Because it is certain at the time of the agreement. Mm -hmm. At the inception only there is an understanding that mm -hmm. if you reach a certain threshold, you will be given so much quantity discount. Correct. So you mean to say that tax won't be like GST won't be like? No, no, GST will be reversed. Haan. GST will be reversed. No, GST will have to be reversed either by debit or credit. Correct. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. Then, at, for the purpose of volume discount, the wholesaler will issue the debit note for that purpose. Yeah. Some invoice would let let us not give the name debit note. Invoice would be issued. So ultimately, what will happen? The tax is reverse is reverse. It would be reverse only. Yeah, it would be tax for the original invoice. No. So how would you tag it? Because that has no no linkage with that. Normally. So there are multiple sales invoices and only one debit note. How will you? This is the part. There is a lacuna. No. For the for the turnover tip discount type of things, no, hmm. the invoice cannot be tagged. Ah, that's what. Because it will consist of so many invoices. There are so many invoices, so that you cannot tag it. I'll, I'll just read that provider which talks hmm. about valuation. It says, provided that such post supply discount which is established as per the agreement and is known as or before the time of supply 
and specifically linked to relevant invoices shall not be included in the transaction. So it will have to go invoice. Mm -hmm. No, so say for example, 20 invoices has been issued in that quarter. So you mean to say that it uh, all 20 invoices uh, needs to be tagged and then it would be reduced. So he will not issue in that manner because then what will happen that that amount would not be cut. So it is a service component. So what you will take? Then my uh, classification will change. Hmm? Then I can't say it's a post supply. Discount. So 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 the commission which he is getting is a commission or whether it's a discount. Okay. Issue will arise when rates are different. What item I am trading is 5% item. And if you treat it as a commission, then it will be treated as a full rate. It will always be good versus service. Good versus goods versus service. No, it will be goods versus service. Good score only. Hmm. It has to be a good score according to the challenge. Is it an invoice which the recipient should issue or is it a reversal that no. the recipient has to do? So that's what what he is saying. A volume discount is not a commission. It's only a discount. discount. So, so, in case of auto dealers also, hmm. they have a yearly discount where they have to hmm. submit a statement of invoices against which that amount is claimed. Hmm. I think. So that is a challenge. What you will consider, whether you will consider it is as a uh, service or whether you consider it as a discount. So that is a challenging part. What you have to consider. Service versus reversal. Yeah. 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 Service versus, versus reversal. reversal. So that's what he is trying to say, right? Yeah. Okay. That is a post sale issue. Is an issue that how you would consider it. Ha, in the valuation they have provided like that. Uh, section 15, you have hmm. that? Can you just show them? Page number 34. First line. Provided that such post supply discount which is established as per the agreement and is known at or before the time of supply and specifically linked to relevant invoices shall not be included in the transaction value. So what it says okay, that won't be included in the transaction, transaction value. value. No, correct. But at that time how would I come to know? I have already issued the 20 invoices to you. Therefore, it will have to link hmm? to that one. But they say it will not be included in the transaction value. So at the time of issuance of those 20 invoices, I have to reduce it. I have already included Ha, huh, you have included it. So exactly. So later on, you will have to reduce it in the, by the way of credit debit notes. So linking those original invoices will be an issue in this case. Another, another point could be about this field of need to capture the details of eligibility of credit. Hmm. Yes, sir, we will okay. we'll come here. First uh, of all, let us be over here. I, I mean, I, sorry. If it, yeah. I, compare, I don't know. Correct. I thought it's here. No, no. We are at the first, uh, first no, return I, I, only, I, I, outward I, I, supply only. Then no, we will come I, I, to no, the input tax credit. No, Otherwise, uh, we are no, no. just uh, stepping no, up, right? Because, uh, anyway. Yeah. We will try to understand now from GSTR 1. Uh, in table number 5, uh, the supplier is required to mention the details of taxable outward supplies which he is making to a registered person. Now, in this case, I think it's hanged. Now in this case, uh, invoice wise details are required to be mentioned. So one doubt which I had in my mind was, what will happen in the case wherein I am making a sale, I am making a sale to a, uh, say I am making a sale to Ashit Bhai through one invoice. In that invoice I am selling 5 different products which are having 5 different HSN codes. So in that case, will I be required to split my one invoice into 5 line items in this particular table? Or will I be required to, uh, you know, just add one line item? And in that case, if we are saying that we are we are required to split up the line, we are supp uh, supposed to split up item wise. Then how will the recipient match? Will he need to uh, total up uh, that entire uh, uh, leg? How how will he do it? And how will be our system be coded to uh, track this entire situation? So that was the point which I had in my mind. Any, you would like to add on this? No, this is the issue. So basically this is a problem and we have to give the details in line wise item only. Otherwise hmm. you cannot escape because if the HSI and code is different naturally. But then how will the recipient track it? Even if the rate is same, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what. That's why I have said that in the initially that HSN code has a significance uh, over there. You cannot just ignore it. <laughs> that would be the easiest way. How will the recipient track it? Aja. One invoice, one. No, but even see, if I bought the goods from you, having ten different codes, I will also put the same thing, na? Because I cannot uh, put it in a submit and then put it. Even so, I have to do it in the same manner. Yes, yes, yes. Then auto population will happen. HSI invoice. Yes, HSI invoice only it will happen. So if a restaurant is buying uh, say 50 items from Hypercity, will Hypercity uh, issue 50 different invoices for 50 different products? That is not practical. Uh, 50 HSI codes will be required. Will be required. So ultimately, your BHP or one will have to capture those different issues. No, I didn't get you. Suppose you are saying five different items. Correct. For each item, I am putting the same invoice. Naturally, it would be same invoice. But wouldn't that go to a lead to a duplication? It means most of the time it's coming out. They have a check. Same invoice, but you cannot put it again. Correct. That again can be a problem. You don't know what is the back end. That needs to be checked really while while filling the thing because that if uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in this column number fifteen, if the uh, transaction if the tax is required to be paid under RCM, then you'll have to select yes in this particular column. And this transaction will get auto populated in form GSTR2 of the recipient. If there are uh, transactions which are nil rated or are exempted supplies, then the details of those particular transactions may also be furnished in this particular table. So uh, the, uh, the SSE has an option to furnish details of those transactions in, in this table. There is a separate table for mentioning nil uh, and exempted supplies as well. In case if he is mentioning those nil and exempted supplies in this table, then he may he need not mention it in the uh, table which will which will be looking later on. Item number fourteen will also be a challenging issue as far as the service hmm. uh, is concerned. If an invoice is bifurcated in multiple rows, then in value section, which is column number 4, value of invoice needs to be mentioned or value of that particular product will be required to be mentioned. See, if I am mentioning only the value of the product, then how will that uh, entire matching concept function? Because this GSTR uh, IT, ITC1, which we talked about, if they will match the value of invoice, mm -hmm. then how will it function? Then so I think they will uh, check the one by one li uh, line item wise. Okay. How they will uh, then check the whole total? So I don't know. That is going to be a challenge. Challenge, challenge. We'll have to see what happens when they actually. Unless and until the real things comes out, it would be difficult yeah, yeah. to check also. So because testing on, is difficult at right so now. They have to put it on trial basis. <laughs> yes. Ha, yes. naturally. Otherwise, it's not possible. This table 5A talks about the amendments to the details of outward supplies which are made to a registered person of the earlier tax period. So say for example, I am in the month of May 2017. If I have made some mistakes in the return of April 2017, I do not have provision to uh, revise that return of April 17. But what I can do is I can revise those particular transaction in May 2017's return. So I need to mention this de those details in uh, table number 5A. So uh, your system needs to be designed, if you will have a look at this particular table, uh, if you are uh, raising a revised invoice, then you will also need to tag the details of original invoice, original invoice number and date of the original invoice. So your system needs to be designed in such a fashion that you know it automatically picks up the details of original invoice as well. Now a question which came to my mind was, what will happen in the scenario where GSTR, GST 10 is rectified in this table? So say for example in April 2016, April 2017, by mistake I am mentioning uh, someone else's GST 10 and uh, I have uploaded invoice details. 
and that other person also accepts the credit now in the subsequent month in may 17 i realized that i have made the mistake in punching gst number only i want to rectify that then how will that happen will i be able to uh, get that credit back from that particular supplier uh, recipient or how will this so assuming he has accepted it ha huh. what will happen to the credit which that person has already taken so not pointed out he accepted ha so I, will i be required to uh, pay the tax twice see because that person has already taken the credit how will that happen but <coughs> Hey, assuming he accepts it. Ha. Huh. But system system is not designed to check whether he has invoice or not. So uh, assuming that yeah, assuming that uh, we are uh, we are regular in business, we are dealing with each other since uh, quite a lot of time. Suddenly there are disputes between us. So what I do is April 17 I gave you credit. June 16 June 17 uh, since there is a dispute between us I want to reverse the credit which I gave you and the figures are running in lakhs and crores Ah uh, but if once I reverse the credit in system what will you do with the invoice you have to pay the interest but tomorrow when you will pay the interest I will get my interest in refund but see that uh, Hey, this is just a wild scenario which came into my mind that how will it function then? See, in respect to the first thing, say wrong team number has been mentioned, and other guy has accepted. That person has accepted. Now I realize that instead of putting his team, I have to put your team. So naturally, I have to make the entry of yours. So I so I have to pay the discharge, the tax liability output. Now if I wanted to get the credit which I have passed in to him, I have to follow him. and i have to take i don't know where he is located i Why? don't know where he is actually no then you have to visit otherwise your credit is gone it says so that is a challenge so we are saying that yeah. yeah at present at present what is huh? but sir in sir in tds you can revise sir team how can you rectify suppose if the wrong team has been mentioned then how can you rectify aapne galat number se dds bhar diya instead of putting say all the offices are in the one place चार ऑफिस है उसमें आपसे दूसरे का पे लगा दिया हाउ डू यू रेक्टिफाई यू कांट रेक्टिफाई टीडीएस में सर यू कैन रिवाइज रिटर्न एन नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स यहाँ पे रिविजन का फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल तो प्रोविजन ही नहीं है यू कैन जस्ट रेक्टिफाई दी ट्रांजेक्शन यू टू डू द डेब इश्यू द डेबिट नॉट और क्रेडिट नॉट आई थिंक दैट रिपोर्ट because that is the right thing i have issued the invoice in your name there is a subsequent change which has happened that person will not be able to claim it usko to he will get the credit he is already claiming it he has already claimed it then if see i have to rectify it what will happen i have to rectify it because it's wrong so that uh, while you are profiling your return your credit would be reversed because now i have passed the entry that this is the wrong thing under right. which i have filed right. so automatically you will be denied credit right. mismatch would be there because in the subsequent month i have to do that True. so that is a mismatch of of, of only one month at the most not it can't uh, be longer long last time ha ha rakho now yes if some invoices are actually missed out that's in my outward supply i didn't put a single invoice and uh, to whomsoever i was raising invoice he never claimed credit if you have given him the invoice and he can self claim that credit no he is not claiming credit that is a part of composition levy or okay. not taking credit okay. Okay. then uh, can in subsequent period i put it in 5a or how does it uh or it will have to go in 5 it will have to go in 5 because in this 5a table the details of amendments are required to be mentioned The scenario which you are talking about that is not the case of availment, uh, amendment. That is not the case of amendment. Then I will not be charged interest. 
if you are coming on 5a then the interest would be no, less that is mm. what i am asking whether it should be 5a or 5 no so once you are amending it something so 5a will only uh, will no, but he is not amending he yeah. saying that he didn't uh, punch the details of Correct. outward so, so that's the thing na say you have the invoice in for the month of may and you are cha- putting it in the month of november okay. so it's an amendment only of the earlier tax period may i didn't put on That's what. That's why you are putting it now, no? In the month. But how will he amend? Because in this, they are asking the no, details of the original. Yes, yes. See what is this? Details of original invoice are also required, along with the revised mm-hmm. invoice. So in this table, you are required to mention the details only when you are amending a particular invoice. It's a revised. 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 So you you have to pay the interest and you cannot go in five. It will have to be five. Years. Yes, it's five. Years. Otherwise, there is a huge mismatch, huge mismatch. So in the in that particular month, if you miss the bus, then you have to rectify in the another month by way of an amendment. We'll move further. Table number six talks about the uh, taxable outward supplies to a consumer. where place of supply is other than state where supplier is located so in this case they are talking about b2c transactions where the uh, value of invoice is more than 2.5 lakhs so you are supposed to recall, uh, fill details in this particular table only in the case of interstate b2c transactions value of transaction should be higher than 2.5 lakhs in that case only you will be required to give invoice wise details details of nil rated exempted goods may be may also be furnished in this table PO has to be necessarily mentioned because this table captures only interstate transactions. So place of supply details will also have to be mentioned. Table number seven talks about taxable outward supplies to a consumer other than the uh, table number six. Mm-hmm. So Rajkumar, your qu- query would be solved over here. You are saying that I have number of n number of customers where whose invoice value is less than two point five lakh. Table so, number seven. Table number seven. You told there you did not have to give the details invoice yeah. wise. Invoice wise, well, invoice wise details are not required to be there given in table number whole, seven. Uh, at the end of the day, whatever is your total sales that you have to put. So in this table number seven, B two C. B two C. Yes, yes. How I how I come to know that he is going to consume or he is going to use for the purpose of the business? So sir, that uh, you'll have to ask that if he wants credit, if he wants credit, then he'll have to mention because he'll also have to give. Uh, Then you will not permit. Ha. Then he not. So if he wants the credit, then he will definitely give you the ten number. And if he is not eligible for it, then he will reject the credit. So in table number seven, B to C interstate transactions of value lesser than rupees two point five lakhs, and all B to C intrastate transactions needs to be mentioned. Invoice wise, invoice wise details are not required in this particular table. Now we'll move to table number eight and eight A, which talks about the details of credit and debit notes. Details of credit notes and debit notes are required to be. provided only if they are issued as a supplier so if a credit note or debit note has been issued by a supplier in that case he will be required to mention details of those debit notes and credit notes in this table the details which a supplier will mention in this particular table will will get automatically populated in gstr 2a of the recipient so as a supplier if i am issuing any debit note or credit note the recip- the details will be auto populated in recipient's gstr 2a and tagging of original invoice is required at the time of raising debit notes and credit notes because they are specifically asking the details of original invoice so, the if you are raising a debit note or credit note as a recipient then those will not come in this particular gstr 1 yes yes so in case we issue a discount Plan can raise a. Mm. Uh, that was the argument. Either it's a service or a. Uh, this presupposes that it's a sale transaction. 
we'll go ahead table number 9 which talks about nil rated exempted and non gst outward supplies it is advisable to mention turnover details of nil rated as well as non gst supply supplies to avoid turnover differences under gst returns vis-a-vis -vis financials so basically what will happen is the entire turnover which you are disclosing in gst returns they can be verified with your financials so if you don't mention your uh, exempted or non gst supplies there will be a difference in the turnover uh, in your gst returns vis-a-vis -vis financials so it is advisable that those turnover may also be mentioned and which kind of turnover sorry which kind so of say for example if i am a restaurant and if i am selling alcohol alcohol is not covered under gst but i am selling alcohol so the turnover of that alcohol sale needs to be mentioned in this is non gst supplies <clears throat> what will happen to land <laughs> in respect of builders and composition no no at present composition is not there so that's a major issue over here yes yes but can you say at present land that would cover under non outward exactly exactly that's why all this thing is there okay then you will able to have the proposed net then take it and that's why this all the value needs to be added hmm. so land value probably in respect of a developer that would come over here non gst supplies also if the details are of uh, ex can this can you still say exempted supply non gst no it's not an exempted it's non gst supply it's a non, non gst, GST supply it's a non gst there is a column talks about the there is a column of non gst supplies as well in this one so all that will come over there for example my interest income also may come in non gst no why I think that would be the uh, say in a service tax that present it goes under the it's uh, the value it is not concept a uh, value is is to be reduced so it then what you will say whether it's an exempt whether it is non non service no we cannot say that it's a service transaction but since its value is not to be added into the computation value so what at present all of you are doing. just a sec pehle interest ka letters come come to conclusion then we will go to the uh, builder definitely so that is a turnover ha that is not a turnover because that is not a taxable value itself but it's not a interest is not a service yeah exactly on the today scenario we are interest is not a service it's not a supply lending is a service whether it is lending is a function of supply but merely because it is exempted from the value does not mean that it is a service which are been exported and it also includes deemed exports <coughs> so invoice wise details of export transactions are required to be recorded in case of export of service there is no clarity on the details which will be required to be mentioned in table number 7 and 8 so basically table number 7 column number 7 and 8 talks about uh shipping uh, shipping bill and bill of export so in the case of export of service supply of service there is no clarity on what details will have to be mentioned in those columns and uh, uh, uh supply of deemed exports will also be required to be mentioned so say for example if you are supplying to scz or eous if there are exemptions in the gst regime as well then maybe those details will also required to be mentioned in this table table number 11 and 11a talks about the tax liability arising on account of time of supply without issuance of invoice in the same period so say for example i am in the business of banquets i am receiving advance from my customers but i have not raised invoice to them 
but because of time of supply provisions i will be required to pay gst because i have received advance so details of those particular advances will have to be mentioned in table number 11 <coughs> customer wise transaction wise details will have to be provided invoice wise details are not required because uh, obviously you have not raised invoice also the details of purchase order or some reference number will have to be provided once you upload details in this particular table a unique reference code will be generated so we'll see in the subsequent table uh, the purpose of this unique reference code at the time of making amendments details of unique code is not asked for will system show an error in future so that is the query which I had in my mind. So say for example in the month of April 17 I'm, men I'm mentioning some details in table number 11. Now in May I realize that I have made some errors. But system has already generated a unique code for you know, when I have mentioned details in table number 11. Now 11A does not ask for the unique code. How will the system match that particular transaction? So I don't have question to this, uh, don't have answer to this question. But if Ashid bhai can add something to See, First of all, I am failed to understand that it says that time of supply, the issuance of invoice has to be on the events occurring of the five events. Right? In respect of supply, if it's the supply of goods, then five events are there, and in respect of supply of the five events are there. Whichever is earlier, I have to issue the invoice. So take an example that we have received the advance from the customer in respect of a banquet hall, so I have to issue the invoice. No, but if they give a time limit of say 30 days or 45 days. Yeah. Mm. 30, days. 30, 30 days, correct. So, so I received days. advance on 28th April mm. and I'll raise invoice on 15th May. So correct. that is within the time period. But for the month of April, I'm required to pay GST because I've already received advance. Actually, I'll give a simple example. Like, for example, I uh, receive an advance for a sale of goods. So my time of supply will be the time when I receive advance. Mm. My invoice is required to be issued when the goods are removed. So it will, it will be carried along. No, no, no. Why? Any of the five events, no? Invoice will have to move along with the goods. Raising of invoice. That's fine. So that doesn't mean that I cannot give the predated thing. Is it like that? Because what it says. So if you give predated invoice, then you'll have to mention details in table number five only, na? Yeah, that's it, huh? So no, but you, if you already missed this date of 10th, hmm. then how will you do it? No, because see, ta what time the say when you have to issue? On the See, time doesn't say when you have to issue. Time says when you have to pay the Pay, yes. Point hmm. of tax. It's Point. on the point of supply. Invoice hmm. rules for goods say along with the invoice or goods. Like for hmm. services, they say 30 days. Hmm. There it's on the yes. correct. So yeah, this is a question. We'll have to see what happens in this scenario. So, as I was mentioning that once we mentioned details in table number 11, a unique code will be automatically generated by the system. And when in future in subsequent month, when I am raising invoice for that particular advanced transaction, I'll have to mention the details of that transaction ID in table number 11 and the details of invoice which I have raised for that particular advanced transaction. So this was table number 11 and table number 12. Uh, if not, we have missed out that Bijal's question. Yeah, Bijal, your question. But uh, would you pay on the land value also? <coughs> Nil Correct. 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 So in GST abatement is there? Ah, you are hoping. So don't hope so. <laughs> so don't hope so. So that's what I am saying. Don't hope so about the abatement. They say that land value, you do, the taxable value, you have to put it. Right? So you have to, some mechanism would be there. Whether it's an abatement or exemption, whatever it may be. But on the land, no tax needs to be payable. So you have to bifurcate. Okay, on the land value, you are not paying it. So you separately put it. On the taxable value, you are paying GST. So that you show it separately. 
Yes, exactly. Correct, correct. Natural. Otherwise, how the bill would be prepared? Because at present that abatement is not there. If it comes, then the whole scenario will change. In this table number 14, the details of invoices which have been issued during a particular tax period will have to be mentioned. So say for example, the series of number of invoices which have been issued for a particular month, the total number of invoices which have been issued for a particular month, the number of invoices which are being cancelled and the net number of invoices will have also will have to be mentioned. So your system needs to be designed to, you know, give you the total of number of invoices which are been issued in a particular month. <clears throat> Tagging of original invoices and revised so invoices. So it, it presupposes that suppose uh, I am buying it from unregistered person, I have to pay tax under reverse charge mechanism. Yes, so that will come in GSTR too. We'll, we'll go no, no, that's fine. So at present the concept which is there, say previously in the BST area, those who are mm -hmm. practicing VAT, mm -hmm. at that time URD purchase, if you buy yes, it from yes. an unregistered dealer, tax has to be discharged by the person who buys the good. Today, many of the state, it is there. Hmm. Maharashtra, in Maharashtra, it's not there. Correct. So, so same concept, I think they are also envisaging in GST. Yes, yes. From the module, we can come to that. Nowhere in the GST law they no, no, have sir, talked about. No, no, sir, but even in the GSTR 2 form, uh, it specifically at one point they have mentioned that. We'll go mm. through that. Yeah. In GSTR 2, they have specifically so, mentioned So, it's that. like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So purchase purchase like from that. unregistered dealers will be liable to pay tax so under RCM. So, this is a from the law. In the model law, nothing has been specified as regards that if you buy it from unregistered dealer, you will be required to pay. Yes, only in reverse charge, they have said that the council has obtained the power that in respect of certain class of person or SSE, whenever you buy the goods, reverse charge needs to be discharged. So we were just assuming that what kind of services or goods would be covered under this kind of situation. And this is the unique case that URD purchases Yes, tax needs to be paid under the reverse charge. This is the... They have specifically mentioned. Huh? Yeah. No, yeah. No, they have mentioned it in the return. Yeah, in the return, yeah, 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 yeah. But in the law or rules, no, no, nothing no, no, is there. No. In the table number 14, even the serial number of the retail invoices will have to be transferred to the return. Suppose I am talking about the big store. The, number, the invoices which a supplier is issuing. No, no, invoices issued during the tax period by a supplier. Huh. Suppose I am a retail chain and I have... 200 stocks in Maharashtra. Mm -hmm. Because every store, I cannot yeah, yeah. any serial number of the Maharashtra. Every store, I identify the at least two stores. Mm. So I will have to identify the 200 stores. I will have to make the 200 stores. Yes. Yes. So, yes. All 200 yes, stores. Yes. 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 So that planning has to be done accordingly. 100%. 100%. 100%. So the details of HSN and HSC. SAC is not mandatory for taxable person whose aggregate turnover is less than 1.5 crores. HSN shall be restricted to maximum of 8 digits. If gross turnover in previous financial year is greater than 5 crores, HSN should be minimum of 4 digits. If gross turnover in previous financial year is equal to or greater than rupees 1.5 crores and less than 5 crores, HSN should be minimum of 2 digits and would be mandatory from second year of GST implementation. In, in the returns they have, in the return rules they have mentioned this. In the business process they have mentioned this, which comes one year, uh, yeah this is from business process. No, even in the, in the, even in the return forms they have mentioned this. No, no. Return, return form. I think it is mentioned in No, no. Return rules not. Ah, prescribe, yes, yes, yes. Ah, the invoice rules I have not brought. This is only written. This is from the business process, that I am, that much I am sure. Let me just read. Which rule, sir, you are talking about? Five. No, no, correct. Uh, rule number. Any correct rule number? Rule number. Rule number. It is one, one, one. 
पेन नंबर सर इट इज मेंशन इन दी जीएसटी आर रिटर्न फॉर्मेट्स एज वेल दिस एंटायर इंस्ट्रक्शन इंस्ट्रक्शन दी एट दी एंड ऑफ इट्स देयर एट दी एंड ऑफ जीएसटी आर वन इट इज मेंशन दो आई मार्क दिस नो सर ओके सो दिस इज ऑल एंड आर फॉर पोटिंग ऑन द इनवॉइस एंड यस 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 now we'll try to understand gstr 2a because since we have uploaded details in gstr 1 this details will get automatically populated in gstr 2a of the recipient so this is the form gstr 2a table 11 ko jab hi every ssc recipient will get this yes because why 10th the supplier will be uploading as gstr so this basically gstr 2a will be available from 11th onwards 11 to 15 so uh, this table number 4 and 4a of gstr 2a talks about inward supplies received from a taxable registered person and this details will be flowing from table number 5 and table number 5a of the gstr 1 every all the details will be auto populated no human intervention Similarly table number 5 and 5a of form GSTR 2a talks about details of debit notes and credit notes this details will also be getting auto populated from table number 8 and 8a of GSTR 1 part b table number 6 talks about the ISD credits received so when a ISD transfers credit the details will get auto populated in table number 6 table number se- part part c table number 7 1 talks about the tds credit received the details of tds deducted by customer other than e-commerce business will get auto populated in table number 7 1 so basically to a everything gets auto populated you just have to verify whether it's correct or not accordingly you have to accept it reject it or defer it so on the basis of the details which you have uh, you know verified in form gstr 2a the details which you have accepted in 2a will get automatically populated in gstr 2 so what you are saying tds and tcs it would be uh, auto populated yes somewhere. yes uh, t- uh, it will be it will come from uh, gstr 7 no ecl method 7 7 e- so uh, gstr 7 GSTR 7 is about TDS returns mm-hmm. and uh, GSTR 7 is supposed to be uploaded by 10th yeah, of the subsequent yeah. month so from 11th onwards this details will be available in 8 is that uh, e-commerce yes 8 ah, is that but that date is also 10th right yes 7 is about then tds returns otherwise i was thinking it will come from the electronic cash no, no, ledger no, or no, no, no. credit ledger it will come from GSTR 7 we now we'll talk about form gstr 2 uh, which is about the details of inward supplies so in this there are two sections if you will observe that uh, below column number 1 it's mentioned auto populated so the transactions which are accepted in form gstr 2a will get auto populated here correct and after this if there are some transactions some invoices which you have in your hand but your supplier has not uh, recorded in his gstr 1 those particular credits you will have to self claim in this gstr 2 now ashit bhai this uh, purchase from unregistered dealer which you are talking about mm. it's uh, clearly mentioned mm. supplies attracting reverse charge mm. other others claimed by the receiver taxable person would include supplies received from unregistered taxable person no so i was just thrashing ah, it not nowhere in the rules as well as a uh, model yeah, in, it is there yes. only in the form they have given that's the my only apprehension yes, okay, why yes. uh, in this manner you know it yes. becomes very difficult to correlate everything if you wanted to say something you say over there very boldly why you wanted to give something here something there and then ask professionals to read in in the totality 
Yeah, so in the second part of this table, the transactions which are attracting tax under RCM will have to be mentioned. <clears throat> Details of purchases made from unregistered dealers needs to be manually punched here. Obviously, because unregistered dealer will not be uploading any returns, so you'll have to do it. Uh, one point which needs to be taken care of is that if the supplier is received in more than one lot, the invoice information should be reported in the return period in which the last, last lot is received and recorded in the books of accounts. So that was about... So the, 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 here is a one a very major issue will come. Say for example, I wanted to have a customized machinery which itself take two years time to purchase, to uh, develop that machinery. My Vendor says that you have to pay 25% if I complete 10% of uh, uh, advance, 20, next 25% after completion of 10% work, next and that whole slot is Now how to do that? How to record that? Whether credit would be received when? Because here the goods are not received in load. So that's a challenging thing, how you will record it. Naturally, whenever I pay him in advance, he has to issue the invoice within 30 days because he is receiving the money. So he will issue me the invoice. At that point of time, naturally he will levy the tax on that yeah. and give it to me. I think... Uh, Take me. Rajkumar, Pila first, let me just give him them the issue. Then you can say. So, ten per advance, pure advance, he will issue me the invoice. On completion of the 10% or 20%, again he will issue me the invoice because I have paid him. Now while filing the return, how it will work? Because you have to tag each and everything. He, even he will write his invoice in some different manner. Otherwise, even he will lose his track. Yeah, now you tell me, sir. What I think is, in case of supply of a machinery, which doesn't happen part by part, the supply will happen only when the machine is ready for the delivery. Okay? You may be paying the advances as per your milestone, etc. Hmm. That's one part of it, but it does not denote any supply. Mm. I think the question would be, supposing you want a particular item, say of say uh, one ton, which is not normally available, by one contract you have, you have given one ton order, and that man will be giving you every time one tenth of that supply. That is in different lots. That can be said to be in different lots. So the question would be that first lot has come, you are not able to claim that input credit because of this. Second lot come now, only when the last lot come, though each lot itself is a separate supply, but under one contract, the issue will arise. Sir, but you give clarify my issue. No, no, I am saying that... So, no so you need not have to pay the tax no, no, at the time of delivery you only? Say, when you say that you have given order for a complete supply, mm -hmm. okay, so for example, take a case of, uh, the issue will arise, not in case of machinery, but when, say in case of a developer, okay? When you are giving this uh, contract to the contractor and say that one tenth, I mean, first slab is complete, second slab is complete, whether that supply itself is that slab wise or what? That's the first question. That first completion of first slab will become supply or no? Of course. There's a question. No, of no, course, I mean, it's a uh, continuous supply. It's a continuous supply. You have to issue the invoice, you have to pay the tax. There is uh, no uh, way. The, the way it is. The contract is drafted. Exactly. It would be drafted in the drafted. same manner, no, sir? It would be drafted. So, I have to but, pay but, the but, tax. But, but, but Only the question of credit is the issue. The question will not, apply, will not arise in case of uh, order for a machinery, for a complete machinery, because you cannot say that part completion is a completion. So, so I do not have to pay the tax. Nobody will give you. But when you pay, you will have to pay. No? So that, ah, it's only on receipt of advance. Ah, that's what I am saying. Okay, on achieving of the each milestone, I have to pay it and while recording the final invoice at that time, what will happen? So, what I'm trying to say because what will though. happen that how we will do that billing? How we will record it? Whether each time everything has to be tagged, that is required. The question is of receipt of uh, input credit, claiming of input credit as and when the advance is paid. No, I am not, not on Not in the when the supply is made. There is no supply. There cannot be part supply. When I want a complete, uh, uh, see, I want a com this room to be completely air conditioned. 
Okay, if you put one air conditioner, air conditioner over there, thereafter you put another air conditioner. I may be paying you by installment, but unless and until you give me the complete room fully air conditioned, I'm not going to accept it. So there is no supply at that point of time. It's only milestone payments are there. So some and substance whether one should pay tax or not to pay tax. So, so I think there is a like you know in drafting. So while the while the while the time of supply they say the receipt of pay, advance extends to the time of supply. And invoice provision says that the invoice has to be issued at the time of supply. So there is the lacuna. Exactly. That's so what I am trying to highlight it. Okay, there is a problem in respect of such continuous supply of goods. So far the advance receipt is concerned, you will have to admit the tax liability. Mm. That's right. Without issuing the invoice, which is which is. Right now available under service tax. You can Goods take on wet me, wet provisions are not there. Ah, wet me advance. Nice, advance pay. Ah, so, so which is there? That's why this problem will be the this is serious the problem. Taken care of in service tax today, which will arise here because on the payment of annual fees, you are not getting any supply. Because drafting lacuna, they should remove the word issue of invoice. So far, advance is concerned, there would not be invoice, but you will admit the tax liability. Sir, without e without e invoice, how can you admit the tax liability? Through the GST. Huh? Through the GST. No, but how to keep a ta tax then? Okay, whether this is for this advance, unless and until you issue the invoice, you cannot able to tag it, and that's why this tagging concept is there. That is the reason. Ah, yes, yes, you wanted to say something. No, 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 I'm not. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, please. Yes. Table number 4A talks about amendments to details of invert supplies received in the earlier tax period. So basically details of amendments in ITC or in ITC claimed in the previous periods to be disclosed here. The details mentioned here will get auto populated and counterparties from GSTR 1A. So basically if I have uh, you know uh, availed a credit in the month of April 17. If I am making any amendments in May 17 in on on those particular inputs, this this transactions will automatically get populated in suppliers form GSTR 1A, which he further needs to accept or reject based on the facts of the case. <coughs> the details of import of goods will be required to be manually punched in table number five, which talks about goods and capital goods received from overseas. Details of bills of bill of entry will be required to be mentioned in column number uh, column number three one two uh, column number one to five. Uh, also, the eligibility criteria will have to be selected whether you are eligible to take credit of those particular goods or not. That those details will have to be selected. And table number five it talks about amendments in relation to imports of previous months. So, if there are any amendments in those particular import transactions of the earlier tax period then you need to mention in table number 5a table number 6 talks about services received from a supplier located outside india so table number 5 was about goods table number 6 is about import of services so basically in table number 6 details of services imported will have to be mentioned and in table number 6a, if there are any amendments in previous month's uh, transaction, then the uh, details will have to be mentioned in table number yes, 6a. Yes. Say for example, I have imported the services hmm. for personal purpose. And at present, the law says that they will exempt some of the services which are in the nature of for personal consumption. Up to A, then they have put a tag up to this much amount that they also they have not yet specified. So now presuming that I have imported the services, and that comes falls under that exempted criteria then do i have to enter over here it because that they have not envisaged in here yeah so that is possibly there are two columns one is value one is taxable yeah huh, so that they have not envisaged over. that's what i am trying to tell you that they have not uh, value will be full, but yes will be zero <laughs> they have considered itc eligibility non and everything because the ultimately even my purchases needs to be correlated with my financial statement it's not only my outward, outward supply. supply so that's what they have no, but, but, but how personal purchase will come into picture i mean the personal use services use, use, i mean import of service for personal use how it will come into picture i mean you are you may be saying that in case of a proprietor it can happen okay but that but in, even in that case if i am a proprietor of a firm which is traditional i may 
still get something which is our import something which is a personal nature. Okay, that why I am not going to claim credit on this. Why that at all should be included here? Sir, that's what I am trying. But I am saying why that should at all it should be included here. Just report that there. Remember the service sector now. So maybe you will be importing for yeah. online. Yeah. yeah. It is the it is the supplier who will have to get registration in the in India. Correct. Either he himself will have to get registration, yeah. or he will have to find somebody. Correct. So this this and if you see the policy by the E Y H S, they say that the right tool has been framed, looking in this has been aligned with the G S T law. So when you will be importing for the your personal use, you will not be required to pay tax. That will be levy levy tax, but on the reverse charge basis or on the forward charge basis, where the over supplier. Correct. Over the supplier, either we will have to take decision in India himself, or he will have to appoint somebody. I don't know how the government will control if I download some software from. And that's and. That is the issue. But the law they have framed. Let's talk about not something. Let's talk about some music. Yeah, that is the. Let's talk about some. I mean, software could be for for some reason. So that is that for some music. So that will be the challenge. How the suppose sitting at my home, I download something from the internet. And where the supplier is there in Singapore, and he is not present here. His agent is also not present here. That would be something that how the government will control. How how will how will be tracked? Ah, how the government will be tracked? They are friends of the law. That if you are supplying to some Indian citizen, either you come in in, in India to take registration, or you are buying somebody who takes the registration on your behalf. Yeah, first of all, first of all, no, so now they have said it would call a poll under the reverse charge. Yes, there is a forward charge. Ah, forward charge. Just, just, just. First of all, whether it is taxable. First of all, the first question. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, I am talking about the under the GST also. Personal use, import for personal use is not taxable. Sir, taxable. It's taxable. Only if I use for certain, I mean, up to certain limit. That's what I am. The exemption has been removed. Just now it has been removed. Remove the exemption. Under the service tax, there was an exemption. Yeah, yeah. That has been removed. Even today, even today, service tax, there is no liability to pay. No. No. Recently, no, no, recently. recently. Now, now the, mm -hmm. now the, but, 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 whether the transaction itself becomes liable, I mean, just by. Rule three. Yes. Last week only. Last week only it has been. The place of provision is amended. Amended, but. Rule two is also not, you, you are not a business establishment. No, if you go to place of supply rules, I mean, just try to. No. I, I think let, let's stick to GST. Let's not go to no, the CFR. Yeah. Separate, uh, yeah. 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 Column, yes. Okay. Therein, even if you want to do track the purchases together, as what we have seen in the outward supply. That the whole uh, total needs to be checked. That won't be possible over here. Correct. So whatever a provision extension which we book, we don't book the tax. We just book the extension. The invoices normally come three four months afterwards when actual the service is completed. So that time if he raises the invoice. I may take the input rate at that time, but what about the matching of my purchase? That has to be a reconciliation item. That is a reconciliation. And believe me, friend, dear. Now every month you will get lot many phone calls from the person that boss, we have not booked it, book it. Otherwise, three four months you will forget. It's a matter of. Take the case of a chartered accountant. We are always six months behind for our audit. So that will not work now. <laughs> believe me. Why is not work? Why? Huh. See, what will happen? I have issued the. I have not issued the invoice. I I I, I will say I have issued. I have issued the invoice. He has not booked it. He will book it after four month period of time. No 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 no. No no no. Yes. Yes. As a company, suppose somebody has booked my audit fee. Hmm. Okay. They, they are not going to take the taxes. No. Taxes. Correct. 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 I will issue them invoice in the month of September. Hmm. So that time my sales is selling. My tax is selling. He will take the input in September only. Correct. But reconciliation that time turnover will not be happening, so it will go to reconciliation. Yes. Turnover of who? Purchase turnover. No, so they, why we need to take the this turnover? Why we need to take it? No, he will not take it in March. He will take it in September only. Why will he take it in March? That is only the provisional entry. No, no, no. 
that will not be the why the supplier the person who's return is to file he will check for the others balance sheet item no, no, i am not telling others balance sheet when i am the recipient in hmm. my reconciliation so my reconciliation will always stand at Sir, so at that point time time also my purchase is in the month of September only. Why it would be of March? That I don't able to understand. So that is the provision. That's what. That is the provision. What you are anticipating that this could be my expenses. That is not an exact expenses. Yes, accounting purpose you have made it. That is not your expense unless and until you receive the invoice. Uske upper pe you are making payment. No, unless and until you receive the payment. That is just a provision entry. So the income tax law has made a proper provision for that. Yes, yes. Income tax law has recognized this. They have made the proper provision, and if the TGST directed, they are allowed to get the expenses. So that that sort of this is not. So if someone is booking my uh, provision to me, be able to be in March. No, 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 no. You have to see it from the service provider's perspective. Point of supply. But that is a provision which they have made. That is no, no, sir. Service also there. Service also there. But that is says that I have received the services. That I have received the services. Just a sec. Ah, receipt of services. Ah, receipt of services. This is not receipt of services. In the month of March, there is no receipt of services. हाँ, he is making no 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 how can you say receipt of service audit fees which you have provided in the month of September can you say it is provided in March? Let us assume that audit audit for some other service which was complete but invoice was not raised and therefore he has created the provision. For example, advertisement expenses are the common in the big corporate. Or even electricity for that matter. So there the advertising services rendered but invoice comes after three four months. So there the for Finally, they are going to create the provision. There is a difference. There is a difference between when you say that yes, I have received the services, and there is a difference between provision. Provision is just an estimated. Like believe me, ah, income tax guys, please correct me. It is just an provision for the expenses or income. So pending, but when pending invoice created the provision. So once you say like that, that yes, I have received the services, then what you say is correct. But nobody would like this. Do that. Ha, exactly. Without invoice, how we will justify, quantify it? No, no. There are there are other ways of doing it. If the advertisement is released, okay, you have got proof of it. Okay, or some marketing that is released. Maybe invoice is not issued, but the service is provided, or the service is received. So that issue does not arise because invoice is made. Ah, fine. So you, 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 and then you have you received you received the service also. You received the service also. You made the provision also. Only thing that invoice is not issued. Correct. That's okay. So that's what he is saying. Okay, on that basis. Based on my provision, whether time of supply of the advertisement. Yes, yes, yes. Then, yes. then, then he was gone. Because that last clause is for that purpose only. I will be showing my reco. Moment I show you my reco, whether his time of supply will be triggered. देर हो ही जाएगा ट्रिगर हो जाएगा क्यों नहीं हो जाएगा ट्रेयर ट्रेक होगा जाएगा टैगिंग इज देयर नाउ एवरीथिंग वुड बी कम टू नो रिको में हां टोटल अमाउंट जाएगा नहीं रिटर्न में तो पता चलेगा ना बॉस व्हाट विल हैपन ही इज बुक डेट इन मार्च आई विल से आई हैव इशू द इनवॉइस आफ्टर 4 मंथ्स हां एंटी में ही विल नॉट शो इन रिटर्न ना तो पे देन हाउ कैन यू से दैट यू रिसीव्ड द सर्विसेज देन यू आर चेंजिंग योर स्टैंड I have not received the invoice, therefore I will not show. You have to say, you have to say, I have received the service or good. That is, you have to. I have received the invoice, but I have not received. I have received the service, but not invoice. So yes. then, like so the then it's not a provision, please. So, so what will the? Then you say, I have received the services or good. Please return you to the person. You have to show it over here. I don't have invoice number, boss. Where do I show? Even if I want to show a rectification, or that two A. Self claim. Let let talk about that. It's not a service. It's a goods. What you will show? चलो लेट्स टेक दैट हां नहीं सूत यो खबर ना पड़ी हां अरे सेप सेप में तेरे से कौन सा ना आईआर दिया अरे यार वो सेप मुझे पता नहीं है यार गुड रहेगा तो क्या करेगा चलो सेम लेट्स डिस्कस दैट तो गुड रहेगा हां तो व्हाट माय इनवर्ड विदाउट इनवॉइस यू विल शो दैट इट्स माय इनवर्ड बट व्हाट इज द वे आउट आई हैव टू रिमूव द स्टॉक यार 
That's what the bus. So, you without invoice, you will book it, na? Ki nahi. I will book it, but how do I dispose of my return? That is the question. Then, usko to you have to follow up that guy. No, no, don't accept goods without invoice. Nahi, nahi, nahi. Main yohi bolna. You, you have to chase that other person that please give me invoice. Otherwise, there is no way out. One, one, one more reconciliation. Your books of account and business return. Yes. So there is lot of opportunity for all of us to do reconciliation. You play with the figures. Not only, not only do the reconciliation, then explain to the stupid officer that he is reconciled. We'll go ahead. Table number eight, which talks about supplies received from composition taxable person, unregistered person, and other exempt nil non GST supplies. So this details will have to be manually punched. Because uh, uh, composition dealers will not be mentioning invoice wise details, so we'll have to manually punch these details. Uh, the details of ISD credit received will get auto populated only to the extent which are not been mentioned by the distributor. We'll have to self claim those details in this particular table. Table number 10 talks about TDS, uh, TDS credit received, it will get auto populated from your form GSTR 2A. Table number 11 talks about ITC received on an invoice on which partial credit availed earlier. So in this table basically ITC taken earlier shall be auto populated upon choosing the invoice number. Table number 12 talks about tax liability under reverse charge arising on account of time of supply without receipt of invoice. Again? <laughs> So basically, uh, if I have uh, on a particular invoice, say for example, I am getting an invoice of 100 rupees, but I have received goods of only 60 rupees. So I will be eligible yeah, to again, take. Going into the lots issue. Yeah. yeah. Issue of the lot. Again, coming back to the same thing. That means you can. Is there any staging that there can be partial credit? Yes. No, where are you, sir? Table number twelve. So I'm coming to that case. They are changing a situation where the partial credit. Yes, yes. Actually, that's what. If you are receiving the advance loads, then method. you are saying that the advance is received, but the material is not received. So there is no need. Uh, there could be a situation of capital goods having 50% credit first year, 50% credit second year. So partial claimed earlier, partial received later. But here, there is no need. 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 Let's say capital goods in the year 1517, 50% which has gone, balance 50 hmm. will have to flow. But there is a change in that situation. Ah. That could be but the only situation. Auto no, it can be auto hmm. It cannot be auto population. Earlier, 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 now there is no question of deferred, no? Earlier, that will come in only the first return, no? Not in between. Sharma ji will uh, correct me. Earlier, people were forming the HUF when the baby was in mother's womb. That was the situation. <laughs> Ready to start. I don't know. Table number 12 talks about tax liability under reverse charge arising on account of time of supply without receipt of invoice. So basically transactions of which invoice is not received but tax is paid under RCM because of time of supply rules. Those particular transactions will have to be mentioned in this table. And also once you mention transactions in table number 12, a unique number will be mentioned, uh, will be available. That unique number will have to be provided in table number 13 in the subsequent month when you will be raising the invoice. We so say yeah, so that I have received the no, service. No, 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 no. That's what we, we could not come to the conclusion. No, no. 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 conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, so say for example, if you are purchasing goods from an unregistered dealer. I know that this Correct. is the value. So you have received the goods, but he has not re given you the invoice. So definitely you are required to pay tax under RCM. So those details will mention in table number 13. And subsequently when he gives you the invoice in next month, ah, in those invoice details will so be mentioned. So that's why that bill number is also not there if you will look at. They have taken very much care. Do you pay the tax? Yes, the yes, yes, huh? yes. Since you have received the goods, you are required to pay the tax. First, pay, you pay the tax. The slogan was pay, smile, what was it? It was Smile. Table number 14 talks about uh, file, smile, and pay. Yeah. File, smile, and go. go. Like that. Well, now that they are introducing GST also. File, smile, and go. Ideas. Ideas. Table number 14 talks about ITC reversals. So, in case if you are re uh, required to reverse a particular credit, you will have to select the reason for reversing the credit and for that a drop down list will be available. Reversals on account of exempt or non-business supplies also will be required to be mentioned here. So at the year end also a reversal has to be there which is at present there under rule 6 of the Senwet credit rule. Mm, yeah. Though it is not there at present, present in the yes. model law yes. but that's what they are envisaging. Yes, yes. But that's... Rules will stop. Ah, exactly, but they are not given in tax senior credit uh, thing model loan. Yeah. They say they yes. Ah, they yes. 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 So such kind of proportionate credit are, in, are anticipated. Anticipating. Yes. We yes. have to be ready with it. You are ready with it. Yes. <laughs> so with this, we end up form GSTR two. Now, once this form GSTR 1 and GSTR 2 are submitted, which is on 10th and 15th of the subsequent month respectively, all these details will get auto-populated in form GSTR 3. So basically in GSTR 3 also there is no human intervention. Everything will get auto-populated. So table number 6.1 to 6.7 of GSTR 3 the details in this particular tables will get auto populated from your GSTR 1. Table number 7.1 to 7.7 .7 of GSTR 3, the details in this particular tables will get will be getting auto populated from the GSTR 2. You just have to verify these details. After that, if there is any tax payable, then those adjustments will happen from your cash and credit ledger and the final amount payable, whatever it is, you'll have to pay. It will reflect in the system automatically and you have to submit your form GSTR 3 by 20th of the subsequent month. Before that, you have to make the payment, right? Yes, before 20th, you need to make payment. Oh, and suppose if I don't have funds, then? You'll not be able to submit GSTR 3 only. Why no? It would be submitted. I think uh, payable only, returns only will the not return be. would not be a valid return yes. for the purpose of claiming credit. Otherwise, yes. you can file it, but it's an invalid return. Okay. You can file it definitely. So without payment, also you can file it, but that has no value. It's as good, good as not filing it only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm? For filing of returns, right? But interest will still be levied for late payment of tax. It is as good as non-filing, na? So penalty would be there, yeah. No, but it will be treated as invalid for the purpose of credit. Hmm. So I think the late filing penalty you can avoid. Hmm. Obviously, it's 10th, 10th, 15, 20th. So even if you file on 20th and pay the tax on 24th, you will still save on the late filing penalty. It says it's an invalid return. Invalid return for the purpose of claiming credit. Claiming the credit. Which <laughs> takes about that. Uh, Fees which has to be, uh, which has been prescribed. That is a question. Good question.
so uh, section 27.3 says that a return furnished under subsection 1 by a registered taxable person without payment of full tax due as per such return shall not be treated as a valid return for allowing input tax credit in respect of supplies made by such person yeah for that yes. purpose, yes. So then that means you can save the lead filing fee. What are the manual fees in GST or is it just the whole Sorry, I didn't get you. At present no fees has been prescribed. Manual fields in GSTR three. No, I don't think there are any manual fields in GSTR three. Yes. On the basis of GS But you have done so much in 1 or 2, then you will do it in 3. What will you do in 3? What will you do in 3? Everything in 1 or 2 will be done. So basically you have to file only 2 returns. Third is like this. Third is like this. Yes, exactly. But 3 is also required because even after filing 1, if your recipient is making any amendments, then your 1 is again getting rectified to that extent. Yes, yes. Credit का main thing है three में credit will be there. One A will get auto populated in your one A. Then you have to select. Then you have to yes, yes. You can accept or reject his modification. But that the time period is very less, ना? Yes, yes. So in five days what you will do? In respect of thousands in voice, how do you will keep a track? For making payments, I have to make annual calculation. No, this table will automatically show, na? Additional liability comes up by in the GSTR three. So, you know what, what, how actually you determine that? Actual liability comes up by in the GSTR three. So, you know what, what, how actually you determine that? Actual liability comes up by in the GSTR three. So, you know what, what, how actually you determine that? Actual liability comes up by in the GSTR three. So, you know what, what, how actually you determine that? Actual liability comes up by in the GSTR three. So, you know what, what, how actually you determine that? Actual liability comes up by in the GSTR three. So, you know what, what, how actually you determine that? Actual liability comes up by in the GSTR three. So, you know what, what, how राइट वहाँ से ही फिर आपको हाँ क्या रिफॉर्म है या तो रिफंड मिलेगा पैसा भरो बराबर है ना कहीं तो मनी सो नेक्स्ट इस डी जीएसटीआर आईटीसी वन व्हिच इस डी आईटीसी मिसमैच रिपोर्ट सो दिस पर्टिकुलर रिपोर्ट विल समराइज डी और एंटायर आईटीसी मिसमैच इन दिस पर्टिकुलर टेबल The important points which are to be noted is that additional invoices added by the recipient will remain under mismatch category till this are accepted by pairing supplier. So unless the supplier also accepts the additional invoices, they will still remain under the mismatch category. Also all invoices will remain under mismatch pertaining to those suppliers who have not filed the valid returns till date. Correct. So this was about the ITC mismatch report and uh, GSTR 9 is the annual return. Uh, luckily in uh, GSTR 9 invoice wise details are not required. You just need to give up give total figures. So that is a good part of GSTR 9. I think it's, it's simplistic. We don't need to discuss much in GSTR 9. Now we'll go to the registration part. Yeah. It's there, na? Whenever you submit this annual return, along with that audit report also has to. Annual return, you have to give the reconciliation statement. That reconciliation has to be audited. Has to be audited. Certified. And limit is also very small, one crore, one rupee. Baseline. Baseline. Three years, na? Registration. So what? रिकन्सिलेशन हेज टू बी सेक्शन थर्टी टू यस सेक्शन थर्टी सब सेक्शन टू एवरी टैक्सेबल पर्सन हु इज रिक्वायर्ड टू गेट इज अकाउंट्स ऑडिटेड अंडर सब सेक्शन 
4 of section 42 shall furnish electronically the annual return along with the audited copy of the annual accounts and a reconciliation okay. statement reconciling the value of supplies declared in the return furnished for the year with the audited annual statement and such other particulars as may be present. That is nothing but reconciliation. Audit report that is a reconciliation. That is, a reconciliation. Yes, that is the, what they are saying. 9B has also been given in the Excel form. 9B. Huh? 9B. So that is reconciliation. Hmm. That is reconciliation. That's why it's a, not like an audit report. We will just touch upon the registration part. So first we will look about the steps which an existing SSE is required to take while migrating to the GST regime. So step number one is that he will be required to fill up form number G. Uh, uh, he will be granted registered person with valid PAN will be granted registration on provisional basis. So in Maharashtra also registration has started from yesterday. Uh, today? Today, or, today. No, even yesterday it was available. No, no, no. Today, today. Now the temporary ID is there, you can view it. Yes. Okay. No, now okay. you can so view it. Now it is started. So registered person with valid PAN shall be granted registration on provisional basis in form number REG21. So this is the step number first. This is the first step. A provisional registration will be granted through form number REG21. Then that particular SSE will be required to submit the details which are asked for in that particular form also will be required to attach the documents which are required in form number REG20 so this REG20 will be required to be submitted after he receives provisional registration once the details are submitted in form number REG20 the officer he, he may either grant the registration if he finds that the documentations are proper and every, the details are uh, in order then he will grant registration uh, under form number REG06 if he feels that the details are not okay then he has a right to, he has right to uh, cancel the uh, yes yes after issuing a show cause notice he can cancel the application by form number REG22 so these are the steps for migrating from uh, current regime to the GST regime so that means it is mandatory for all the existing uh, uh, taxpayers to take the get the registration irrespective of their turnover no 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 then, no. then not mandatory. what will happen i can just uh, forget that provisional id it will get cancelled. no you have to take it then within 6 months then you don't submit it then assessing officer will cancel it otherwise it is mandatory they are already cancelling all those no, but it was those who have been cancelled, but now suppose I might, uh, due to any reason, my number has not been cancelled, then I have to obtain it. There is no other way. Schedule 3 says, subject to the turnover, every person who is registered the, before this appointment mm -hmm. is required to do it. Correct. Then you, go to the, to then you go to the rules, migration rules. They say every person has to require. You go to rules for that. There says, say, uh, you have to mandatorily get the registration. If you say that, yes, due to my items in which I am dealing is exempt or my turnover is less than that prescribed limit of 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs, then I have to apply for the deregistration and my registration number would be cancelled. But otherwise, it's mandatory. Now it would be mandatory because now there is no point filing your cancellation of that. Item. Ah, now there you cannot. Yes, yes, yes. Suppose I have a back number no that is a question now because the SSC is registered at three places he is a manufacturer excise he is a service provider and he is a vet provider so everywhere that uh, no, provisional number would be there so it appears at present that out of these three numbers you have to ignore two and only one has to be selected. This is what I feel. Huh? But practical... Then, uh, all clear pen based. Hmm. All clear pen based. So can't they merge yeah. this product? Because at this point also you will be mentioning your existing excise numbers and all. So I think they will map it directly and... No. no. Yes. Unfortunately they are not mapping. Na. See, that is the biggest problem. No. Yeah. So when it's all 
Let's hope. Let's hope so that they do this. बट ऑल्सो वाइल मेकिंग एन एप्लीकेशन इन दिस फॉर्म आर ई जी ट्वेंटी यू हैव टू मैंशन योर एक्सिस्टिंग एक्साइज नंबर वैट नंबर सर्विस टैक्स नंबर ऑल दो नंबर विल बी मैंशन अदरवाइज वॉट विल एपन द क्रेडिट विच इज लाइंग इन दैट अदर लॉ से एक्साइज और सर्विस टैक्स दैट विल नॉट बी मैप ना but does it mean that uh, once you migrate your weight number you are not required to migrate your service tax number you may not get a no, user id password you will not get user id password no? your provision user id password the system is so designed the number of mat accessories are more than the number Correct. of service tax there being an overlap the system is devised first they will migrate all the vat accessory then whatever sub sub uh, is there That both the uh, VAT as well as service tax or excise is there. They will be removed. Then there will be an isolated case. So, but as an as an as an accessory, VAT accessory, service tax accessory today, or say even VAT accessory. Okay. Am I required once I am migrating to VAT number with all the details? Am I again required to migrate? No, 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 no. no, no. Sir, that's what he's saying. If why VAT has been taken first, because the common name is for the manufacturer VAT is there. So that's why first of all VAT. Then they will see that uh, how many people are going out of that excise and service tax. So if you are not in VAT. Then those service tax accessories is all will all be done. Pure manufacturer will be there in VAT. Pure service. The probability of such a change would be more. So that's how they have gone. So now what you need to take care is VAT department had already asked for those mobile number and ID. Now ACS is also demanding that you correct your VAT mobile and email address. You should ensure that the mobile number and email you have given to VAT should match with the other one. people has not opted for reliance jio <laughs> what are the steps for taking f- uh, yeah registration is not required migration is compulsory before 30th just because the time slot because it is mandatory yes with the document so you have to attach the documents in the form itself then within 6 months he has to sub, uh, submit yeah. for the cancellation yeah so automatically notice will come you need not worry sorry i think they will be again opening the forum for them after yeah now what are the steps for uh, making a fresh application for gst registration so first step is that pan will be validated with the gr uh, cbt d- database mobile number and email verification via separate otps so uh, that is part a of form reg1 then uh, after successful validation of part a of form uh, reg01 electronically submit part b duly signed along with document specified in the said form so this is step number 2 Step number 3 is that application shall be forwarded to proper officer who has to take action within 3 common working days if the documents and application are found in order proper officer can issue registration certificate he may clarify or further information for further information and call for same in form gst reg03 so basically if he requires further clarification he will issue form reg03 if he accepts then he will directly issue reg06 so applicant has to submit the uh, clarifications which the officer has asked for in reg04 on the basis of details submitted in reg04 the officer may either uh, accept reject or if he doesn't take any action then it is deemed that the registration has been granted so these are the steps for taking registration for making a fresh fresh application under the, under the gst regime so multiple registration एबीसी एल एल पी इज एक्सिस्टिंग डीलर एंगेज इन कंस्ट्रक्शन इंडस्ट्री 
having registered office at Mumbai, Maharashtra and construction site at Bangalore. ABC LLP has taken registration under service tax law with Mumbai office and also registered under Karnataka VAT laws for the site of Bangalore. Invoice pertaining to input services are billed at address at Mumbai office. So these are the facts of this case. Do you want me to repeat or? Yeah, so the issue is first to proceed with registration on 1st January 2017 when enrollment starts by state of Karnataka, then what should be considered as principal base of uh, principal place of business? Yes. Yes, registration in Karnataka. Not for the country as a whole. Hmm. Place, state, state wise. State wise, correct. Bangalore office. Bangalore office. Second issue is whether need to take registrations under GST at both Maharashtra and Karnataka and also Maharashtra as ISD separate registration. Yes, so that gives you an reply that. Sorry? Yes, yes, yes. ISD has to take separate test. So I think this is done. Yeah. Second question you want to take? Second question is XYZ P Limited. These are the facts of the case. XYZ Private Limited, existing dealer and manufacturer under MVAT, CST, Excise and Service Tax, having administration and registered office at Mumbai and factory at Pune. It has registered factory address as place of business under excise law and Mumbai office address as place of business for MVAT, CST and service tax purposes. Issue is to proceed with registration in the state of Maharashtra from 14th November 2016 whether need to consider Pune as principal place of business from where goods will be removed or Mumbai. So basically the issue is whether the play, uh, principal place of business will be Pune which is the factory site or the office at Mumbai. Yes. Yes. And more is the about the vertical segment, where whether that is possible or not. But it's a f one vertical only. One, one, it's one vertical. It's one vertical. It's an the second issue is if Pune is considered as principal place of business, then Mumbai address will be additional place of business, and both are in the same state and considered as business vertical. Not possible. The third query is, is there any requirement of registration of Mumbai address as ISD to pass on the ITC since all places, since they are in the same state, why do you need ISD? There is no requirement of ISD. So basically he is asking that whether he will need ISD registration for Pune, but since they are in the same state, ISD registration is not required. So. No, they are same verticals. No? In this query it is the same vertical, otherwise yes. Because uh, AS70, I believe, allows geographical verticals also. So, for my own purpose, AS70, now in the particular corresponding in AS for the AS70, because for the complete AS70, will not be applicable. Yeah, at present in here, they have said a report only AS70. Ah, no. Don't give that also, the idea. Now the tagging is as for the pen. Registration is pen. Oh, they will allow you the option of various trade names. So I think trade name yeah. is auto generated from your VAT mm -hmm. database. So at present, so even if name will come, you know, you know as a VAT number, that same person has in the same name trade name a service tax number and also some different service activities. Yeah, in different. So different trade name can be added in that. So you will have to file single letter for Single letter. Single yes. letter. At present under service tax with different trade names, yes, it's possible. For example, even this hotels and all, they are there. Now, green 
move them by the hotel name. Correct, correct. But their holding companies are different. Right. That will go as per per their own tax. Now here, what will happen? <laughs> Don't know. In service tax, it's possible. Yeah, yeah, sure. Then migration would be there, no? No, but see, practically it's not last ten minutes. Ten minutes later, but that later. Earlier. Yes. No, but then number is cancelled. Then they are not cancelled. So then, so then in the records, in that records you are the uh, the live assessment. Friends, uh, just uh, let us express, uh, let us express a uh, vote of thanks. We can continue the discussion internally if required. I mean, if they are available. But let's uh, express so that people who want to vote, you know, they can start moving. Okay. You can have a continued discussion for some time if required. uh it was a very let me put it like this we will all agree that it was very good exposition very detailed and uh, has taken care of most of the things there may be many questions which remain unanswered and as i told earlier that there was earlier the you know concept of forming huf when the baby is in mother's womb it is like this that it is written forms have come but the rules are not prescribed or the uh, the law is lacking the adequate rules to take care of the what has been prescribed in that context i only said it okay anyway but uh, yes has given a very good presentation no doubt about it ashit has also uh, answered the queries and taken care of the you know most of the things which has been there this will continue issues will continue because it's quite new and the law is like this because the government is pushing it uh, you know very hard to meet the deadline so issues will remain and we'll keep on having such meetings uh, thank you uh, ashit to chair this session thank you yes for very nice uh, presentation i think please carry on this uh, any other uh, meeting announcement something later on we'll we'll be announcing the meetings uh, as and when good progresses